This is a 2019 BMW 330i, and it's the latest 3 Series. In fact, this is the seventh generation of the 3 Series. The original came out 45 years ago. This car has been an icon for the last four decades, generally agreed to be one of the best cars on sale, all things considered, and today I'm going to review the latest one. I've borrowed this 3 Series from Crevier BMW here in Orange County, California. Crevier is the largest BMW dealership in North America, and they always get the newest and the first of everything, and the coolest colored, and that includes the new 2019 3 Series, which has just started to go on sale here in the United States. Right now, this is the only new 3 Series that's available, the 330i, the base model, with a 255 horsepower turbo turbocharged four-cylinder, but the lineup will soon add the M340i, which will have a 382 horsepower six-cylinder, a boost of 62 horsepower over the outgoing model. Both will offer rear or all-wheel drive, and automatic transmissions will be standard across the board. That's right, no more manuals for the 3 Series. But there's still a lot to love here, at least on paper. You still have a rear-wheel drive chassis, you have a lot of great technology, and you have a fun sports sedan that's a lot more thrilling and exciting than what most rivals are offering. The new 3 Series is 185 inches long. It's grown over the years, but it's only about 10 inches longer than the E36 model that everyone loves. Maybe the most noteworthy thing about the new 3 Series is it has debuted without all that much fanfare. In the past, when a new 3 Series came out, it was a huge deal, but in recent years, market trends have shifted more towards SUVs and crossovers, and that seems to be what more people are interested in. But obviously, the new 3 Series is still worth a close look. So today I'm going to take you on a tour of it, and I'm going to show you all the quirks and features of the latest 3 Series, then I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the 3 Series, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also rounded up a list of the highest mileaged used BMWs currently listed for sale on Autotrader. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the new 3 Series with a rather quirky feature called Backup Assistant. All right, here's how this works. You're driving along, you pull into a parking space. Let's say it's a tight parking space in a garage, and it's going to be hard to get out. Well, with Backup Assistant, you don't have to get out. The car will remember precisely the path you took to get into the parking space, and then you press Backup Assistant, and you allow the car to steer itself out using that exact same path that you took to get in, and that way, you pull into the parking space, the car knows how to get out of the parking space, and you don't have to do any work if it's a difficult parking space, and you're nervous about scraping or scratching the car. The theory here is, obviously, if you pull in a certain way, you can probably pull out that very same way, but maybe you don't want to do that, so the car will do it for you with the backup assistant feature. But with this car, I kind of have to wonder how you could possibly have trouble backing out of a parking space, because the level of camera technology in these new BMWs, including this new 3 Series, is unbelievable. For example, it has this 360-degree camera that basically shows what's going on from the outside of the car, showing the car like a video game. I've shown that to you in a few different BMW, Audi models, a few brands have it, but this time I want to focus on a feature that is especially useful, and it's this camera angle from above that shows the side of the car, and that way you always know exactly where you are on a curb. And you can see right here as I'm pulling up here, it's very clear exactly where the wheels are in the side of the car, so if you're getting close to a curb on a narrow street, you don't want to scrape your wheels, but you want to get as close as possible, this camera angle is your best friend, and they also have it on the other side, so you can see that side and how close to curbs you are on the driver's side. That is an absolutely genius feature. This camera system also has a feature called car wash mode. If you press that, it gives you a top-down look at the front of the car, showing exactly where the lines are, where the wheels will go, in case you're trying to line up this car to go into an automatic car wash, which is a pretty good idea. There's none of that, am I on the track? I'm not sure 
car wash mode, you will be absolutely certain. And then this camera system has yet another incredible feature called the camera activation point. And what this does is you set a destination on the navigation screen where the camera system always turns on. So let's say you're going to work and you have a tight parking garage at work and you want the cameras on, you can set your work location using this feature and then every time you arrive there, the cameras will automatically turn on. So when you're in your work parking garage, you can maneuver around and it won't be a problem. And you don't have to worry about turning on the cameras and figuring out how to do that when you're already in this tense, tiny parking garage. It's a brilliant idea. And basically with all of these features and the number of things you can do with this camera system, you have to wonder what kind of idiot would bump this car into something because there are so many ways to prevent that from happening. Another interesting quirk of this car is the gesture control system. You don't have to bother yourself with simple things like buttons and dials. Instead, you just move your hand in a certain way and various things will happen on the infotainment screen. I have showed you before turning up the volume, you move your finger in a circle and the volume will turn up or down. But I learned a new gesture today. If you're on the satellite radio channel screen or your music player track list and you point your finger to the side, it will change to the next station or to the next track. So you don't have to find the next track button and press it like some plebeian. One other crazy quirky feature I absolutely love in this car is the interior mood lighting. Like a lot of cars, you can configure the color of the mood lighting. That's not the interesting part. The interesting part is when you open your door, it ceases being mood lighting and turns into a red blinking light to let other drivers know that your door is open. So your mood lighting, which provides you with a nice glow as you're driving down the street, is also a safety feature when you open up your door and it starts blinking red. That's a pretty cool idea. Now, next up, another interesting quirk in this car. You can see the trim is this very unusual texture or material design all throughout the center console and part of the dashboard. I think the purpose for this is a lot of automakers are trying to move away from the gloss black trim because it collects fingerprints. And so if you touch it a lot, it doesn't really look so good, but this trim looks really nice and it won't collect fingerprints. And so no matter how much you touch it, it still looks like this. I guess this is BMW's solution to trim in a post gloss black world. Now, next up, we move on to a button in between the climate vents in the middle of the center control stack. You have a button that looks like a car from the top down with a halo around it. That is the button that controls all of the active safety systems for the car, like the automatic forward collision braking if it's sensing an accident is about to happen. So it has that little halo around it because it's a force field that protects your BMW. Now, one interesting thing about that, if you hold down that button, it turns all of these safety systems off and then the button itself, the halo goes away because your BMW is no longer protected by this force field that will keep you safe. Press it again and the force field, the halo turns back on, letting you know that your safety systems are back in place. Now, next up, moving on to the infotainment system. I've covered this infotainment system in great depth in my review of the BMW M5 and somewhat in the BMW 8 series, and I'll link those in the description below if you want to check it out. Today, I'm going to show you just a few interesting quirks I've recently discovered, like, for example, climate control rules. Now, I was going to make fun of this because, of course, the Germans have a button for climate control rules, but actually, it's pretty cool. If you go into the menu, it allows you to configure when the heated seats automatically come on. You can set a temperature and if it's below a certain number of degrees, the heated seats will automatically come on every time you climb in the car so you don't have to worry about pressing the heated seat button. Now, next up, I wanna talk about navigation entry. And specifically, I wanna mention how good the voice control system in these cars has gotten. It's just unbelievable what you can say and the car will immediately pick it up. Entering a destination is a great example of that. Take a listen. Please say the desired address, for example, 300 Chestnut Ridge Road in Woodcliffe Lake, New Jersey. 50 Cliff Road, Nantucket, Massachusetts. Okay, I've selected 50 Cliff Road, Nantucket. I've started guidance. The expected drive time is greater than one day. Caution, 
A fairy is on your route. A fairy? Ooh, I hope it has magical powers. Now, did you see that? I gave the car a direction, kind of an odd address on the other side of the country, not anywhere near this area, and immediately it had it figured out, and now it's directing us to go to that location. Only one problem, this is something that annoys me to no end, there's no cancel route button on the navigation screen. This should be the most obvious button there. You're driving along, you decide you don't want to go there anymore, you should just be able to easily cancel it, not have to go into some menu but BMW has thought of that. Check this out. Right now, there is no cancel route button, but if you move your hand close to the screen, that button appears. So BMW keeps that button away to kind of declutter the screen until you actually need it, and then it senses the arrival of your hand in the screen area, and it pops that button back up in case you want to press it. That is a really cool idea. And with that in mind, it's worth noting that the infotainment, the center screen in this car in general is absolutely fantastic. I was in a Mercedes-Benz, the new A-Class recently, and I said that system was the most responsive. Now this is exactly on the same level. You can touch, tap anywhere, and immediately responds to whatever you do, just like a smartphone. And if you don't like touch screens, as some people don't, there's also a controller in the center console that's basically a hard backup for everything that is touchable in the center screen. So you can just use the controller instead of touching if you prefer to do that. Now, next up, I wanna move into the gauge cluster, which also is a screen like in most modern luxury cars these days. The days of hard physical gauges are pretty much gone. There are a couple of interesting items with this gauge cluster. One is the fact that when you first get in the car, start it, and drive away, it shows the seatbelt status of the rear seats. Are they actually buckled or not? Which can be a pretty cool thing. If you're a parent, you don't want to have to turn around and try to figure out if your kids are buckled. All you got to do is look right in the gauge cluster, and it tells you right away. That's a convenient feature. Another interesting item in the gauge cluster, this one related to the drive modes. Now, to BMW, you have three drive modes. You have Sport, Comfort, and then Eco Pro. Not just Eco. In a BMW, you're an eco-professional, and so there's an eco-pro mode. But the interesting thing is, if you switch between sport and comfort in the gauge cluster, they're roughly the same. It changes a little bit based on the two of them. But if you switch into eco-pro, it changes dramatically. The tachometer goes away and becomes a giant fuel economy gauge that tells you your current miles per gallon at all times in the same size that the tachometer formerly would have told you your engine speed, I guess because if you're in Eco Pro, that's obviously what you're most interested in. So your tachometer can disappear in favor of a fuel economy gauge. One other interesting item in the gauge cluster, this is the 330i M Sport model. And so there are a few M Sport touches throughout the car. Like for example, the floor mats have the little M colors on them. You can see the M logo at the base of the steering wheel, but my favorite M touch is in the gauge cluster. Even though this is a screen, they still integrated three little streaks of the M colors at the very bottom of the screen, just as they would have done with actual physical pieces in an old BMW model. One other item worth noting about the gauge cluster screen is that it's not as configurable as the screens in most rivals. Audi and Mercedes have very configurable gauge cluster screens, but BMW only really lets you adjust the display over on the right to show various functions, and it's nowhere near as customizable as rivals. In fact, so much is fixed on this screen, it sort of defeats the purpose of having a screen. Next, we move on to the back seat of the new 3 Series. And not much to report here, not much has changed. One interesting item is the fact that the rear quarter window in the door is absolutely massive. You can see just how big it is. I think the reason for that is because by making it bigger, that allows the actual window in the door to go all the way down. If the rear quarter window had been smaller, then the rear window would have been stopped by the door frame and the body of the car, but by making it that big, they can get it all the way down. Still, it's unusual to see a rear quarter window that is that big. And next up, the other interesting thing in the back, on the rear door panels, you also have that same mood lighting that you had up front, and just like up front, when you open the rear doors, that mood lighting turns into a flashing red light to let cars know that your door is open. It's a nice mood lighting turned safety feature. Next up, I want to move on to the outside of the new 3 Series, and I want to start with the grill. And as you can see, the grill is currently closed, and that is, in fact, its natural state. The grill is generally always closed in this car, unless you're under hard acceleration and it needs to suck in a lot of air into the engine, and then it will open itself up automatically. And the theory here is by keeping it closed, it makes the car just a little bit more streamlined, which increases fuel economy just a little bit. Now, next up, another noteworthy item in the front of this car is the fact that it 
has laser headlights. Now I've driven cars with laser headlights at night and they're just fantastic, great field of vision. You can see everything, really consistent, clear visibility. But that isn't my favorite part of them. My favorite part is the fact that it says on the headlight assembly, BMW laser. <laughs> so you can show your friends, yeah, I got a lasers. You got lasers? Nah, nah, you don't have lasers. Now, another item worth noting on the outside is the general look of this car. Just like the last few 3 Series models, I think this one looks good. Obviously, it grows a little each time, so it's getting a little bulkier and more bloated, but it's generally an evolution of the previous 3 Series. I still think it looks like a handsome, nice car, and I don't really have any negative things to say about its design or its styling. It looks good. Now, next we move on to the trunk of the new 3 Series, which is not particularly special, although you can do one of these and it'll open right up for you. And once you're in the trunk, one of the interesting things you'll find is there used to be a toolkit under here, but there is no longer. Instead, there's just a phone number for BMW roadside assistance. They figure nobody's working on their cars anymore. So in place of tools, you have someone you can call who will work on your car. Now, the interesting thing is this is still on here in this little plastic clip that you can pull off. And if you do pull it off, well, you discover trunk underneath. I'm not sure why that's just not a label they stick on there, why they put it on that plastic thing, but they do. Now, with that said, it's worth noting this car still does include a toolkit. It's over to the left, you pull up this little lid, and then you have the tools. Although there are only two tools, one is the little thing you screw in to tow the car, and the other is a screwdriver. So it's not really a toolkit, and it's worth noting the lid you had to pull up has a picture of a wrench on it, but this car doesn't actually even come with a wrench. That's not part of the toolkit. So they're overselling it a little bit. And by the way, that little panel that you lifted up to get to the toolkit, it is not simply a panel. It's a quality wall. Oh yeah, better put the quality wall back. Wouldn't want any problems with the quality wall. No, no. And next up, we move under the hood. Although simply getting the hood open is actually kind of an interesting thing in modern BMWs. Modern BMWs do not have traditional hood latches like a lot of cars. Instead, you go into the driver's floor area, like in most cars, you pull a little latch and then you pull it a second time. You can see it says 2X on it and that releases the hood. That way you confirm with two pulls that you want it open. You don't have to go around here and fumble around trying to find the little hood latch to get it open, which is actually a pretty cool idea. One interesting thing, if you open the hood with the engine running, the car will actually display a warning message reminding you that the engine might be hot, just to let you know, hey, you might not wanna open it yet, you might wanna wait for it to cool down. A nice little courtesy from BMW. But anyway, once you get under the hood, nothing unusual, weird, strange under here, you do see this car's turbocharged four-cylinder, 255 horsepower, BMW calls it the Twin Power Turbo, and they proudly print that on the plastic engine cover. And so those are the quirks and features of the new BMW 3 Series. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the new 3 Series. I'm in sport mode here and it feels surprisingly peppy. Now I'll grant you it doesn't quite feel, uh, you know, 340i peppy. It's not quite on that level. But uh, there's, there's good throttle response. I'm actually really interested in driving the M340 to see just how fast that really is. I mean, the power number is absolutely ridiculous. This is where the M3 was not that long ago. Sitting here at a stoplight gives you a chance to kind of look around the interior, and I think the interior in this car is very nice, similar to how I felt about, you know, the X5, other cars like that. BMW does a great job with interiors. The materials are all really nice. It's pretty quiet, and actually just driving it normally without really getting on the throttle, um, it feels reasonably quiet and comfortable. Driving along, the car recognizes the speed limit, and on the heads-up display, it flashes the speed limit if you're going over the speed limit. It flashes it like a pulse. Slow down, slow down. Unfortunately, it doesn't say anything. Yeah, the car feels reasonably quick. You do hear a lot of engine noise. It's not real engine noise. It's, it's sound that comes in uh, that they send into the cabin, I guess, through the speakers to make you think that you're accelerating faster, which of course you are. But that's a sport mode trait, apparently. Technology in this car is just absolutely fantastic. Granted, this one has a few options. You know, the window sticker on this is in the low to mid 50 range. Um, but to have that 360 camera and be able to see all around you, I mean, that's a luxury that a year ago, I was blown away to see that in the biggest, highest BMW, the 7 Series, then the Phantom, the Rolls Royce. 
Now, here's a 3 Series with a base model 3 Series, a few options, and it's got the future. You know, a big question I, that people will definitely have about this car, does it still feel nimble like old 3 Series? You know, the people left who don't think the 3 Series already lost all that years ago when they left the E30. And the answer is, yeah, it still feels kind of nimble and pokey, certainly way more than the 5 Series does, but it is starting to feel like a bigger car. I mean, this is the reality of, of these vehicles, and it's created, you know, a slot below this, the 2 Series, which does feel like a very nimble car, and I think has sort of that E30 DNA. But I think, yeah, there's no question about it. This car doesn't have, it's, it's got a little bit more float to it and that sort of thing, and that's just the reality of cars get bigger, they add more technology, they add more weight, and they add more power to compensate for it, and so, that whole driver connection thing is, is gone, and obviously we don't have a manual anymore. Yeah, ultimately, this is a fantastic car, and I think for, for those who are still into the cars and, and you know, sitting lower, I mean, SUVs have a lot of benefits these days, and, and a lot of regular consumers, I think, are realizing that, and they're buying those. But for those who are still into sitting lower, for those who are, have always wanted a 3 Series, whatever, this is a great evolution of a car that's always been fantastic. It remains fantastic. It's nice to drive. Even this base model 330 feels pokey, fast, peppy, and the technology is, is just incredible in these cars. And so that's the new BMW 3 Series. You know, the changes in this car really represent the changes in the market over the last four decades. With each generation, it has grown bigger and more powerful, and it's added more safety equipment. Technology has become a larger and larger focus. The manual transmission is gone, and obviously now buyers are starting to shift their tastes more towards SUVs and crossovers, which is good for BMW since, you know, they have seven SUVs. <laughs> But the market has evolved, the car business has evolved, and this car has evolved along with it, and this is the latest evolution. And now it's time to give the new 3 Series a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the new 3 Series looks very nice, but it's not particularly beautiful or special. It gets a 6 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds, so it gets a 4 out of 10. Handling is sharp and crisp, but not quite like a sports car, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Fun factor is decent for a four-door sedan, but not like the M3 or other and it gets a 5 out of 10. Cool factor stays relatively low. This is the newest 3 Series, but the market just doesn't seem as excited about this car as new SUVs, like the new BMW X5 and X7, and it gets a 4 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 24 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features, and the 330i has a lot of tech. Not as much self-driving stuff as I'd want, but endless cameras and cool new technology and a great infotainment system, and it gets an 8 out of 10. Comfort is strong, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Quality is excellent, with nice materials throughout out the interior and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is normal for the class and it gets a 5 out of 10. Finally, value, and I'm surprised to say this, but this is a good value. Combining the BMW brand name with a nice interior and a lot of tech and a good driving experience, all for just a little over $50,000. It gets a 7 out of 10 for a total daily score of 34 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 58 out of 100, and here's how it stacks up next to some competitors. The closest competitor on this list is probably the Tesla Model 3 which wins out by offering a bit more tech and a bit more practicality for similar pricing. But the new 3 Series is an excellent contender, and I suspect the upcoming M340i will be especially desirable. <laughs>